Maybe At this quiet. time, please place all electronic devices to vibrate. All electronic devices to vibrate. Will all non-council employees, non-council employees, please leave the main floor of the chambers. There is additional seating upstairs in the balcony. Thank you. Quiet in the chambers, please. May everybody please take their seats. Quiet in the chambers. Please close the doors. Everyone, please find seats in the back. All rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Roll call. Barron. Present. Borelli. May we have quiet in the chambers, please, for the roll call. Please find your seats and please remove your caps. Continue with roll call. Thank you. Thank you. Cabrera. Chin. Here. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Here. Carnegie. Here. Crowley. Combo. Deutsch. Yeah. Drum. Here. Espinal. Here. Eugene. Ferreris Copeland. Garodnik. Here. Gentili. Here. Gibson. Here. Greenfield. Here. Gradenchik. Here. Johnson. Here. Kalos. Here. King. Present. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Lantzman. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Here. Levine. Here. Mizell. Here. Mealy. Menchaca. Presente. Mendez. Here. Miller. Palma. Here. Perkins. Uh, what's up? I mean, here. Reynoso. Here. Richards. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Here. Rosenthal. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Here. Traeger. Here. Ulrich, Vaca, Vallone, here, Williams, here. Matteo, Van Bramer, here. Yeah. Speaker Mark Viverito. <clears throat> All rise for the invocation. The invoke. The invocation will be delivered by Pastor Terry Lee of Bylay, Byway and Hedges Youth for Christ Ministries in the Great Borough of Brooklyn. Quiet in the chambers. Let us first have a moment of silence for all the families of 9-11 and those who were lost in the hurricane at this time. Let us pray. Eternal Father and our God, you are our help of ages past. You are the God of Israel, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, the God of Moses. Lord, we come to you today just to say thank you for one more day. Lord, as we come together in this time, oh God, I pray as we Remember those who have lost their life, O oh God, during a 9-11 attack. And as we reflect, O oh God, I pray that you'll give us the strength, knowing, Lord, that we will overcome. Lord, those families were facing, O oh God, deep challenges, O oh God, during the hurricane, 
oh God, all over the country and all over the world today. I pray that you will grant mercies. Lord, remember those that are less fortunate and today. Lord, remember our immigrants, brothers and sisters who traveled from all over the world to be here, those who serve as responders. Oh God, those who help in the time of crisis, I pray your mercies. Lord, strengthen, oh God, our counsel today. I pray for our leaders. I pray that you will grant, oh God, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Lord, I pray that you will give us strength. Lord, remember our city. Protect, O oh God, those who are serving in law enforcement. Keep us, O oh God, from all acts of terrorism. And I pray that you will guide us and that you will protect us. Lord, bind us together as Jews and Gentiles, Greeks, barbarians, rich and poor, young and old, and let us stay together as church ill. O oh God, speak and said that the enemy is about to hang us. And if we come together, the enemy would have a other task hanging us together. But if not, the enemy would hang us separately. Bind us together in the spirit of oneness. And Lord, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. In your name we pray, amen and amen. Please Thank you. Amen. Please be seated. A motion. Before we, before we get started, Madam Public Advocate, I'm going to have to um, ask if we could all, we've been asked to file out of the chamber and into the rotunda area uh, temporarily uh, for the first floor in the rotunda. Uh, if we could do that orally and quietly, uh, if we could just go downstairs to the rotunda until, until we are asked to come back. Everyone, please use both exits and file out orderly.
Did anyone even search? I know. <laughs>
And now let's resume the State of Council. We are now at the motion to spread the invocation in full upon the record by Council Member Jamani Williams. Council Member Jamani Williams will spread the invocation that was delivered by Reverend Pastor Terry Lee of the Byway and Hedges Youth for Christ Ministries in the borough of Brooklyn. Council like, Member Williams. I'd like to motion to spread the invocation in full uh, upon the record. And uh, I want to say thank you to Pastor Terry Lee, who is shared by myself and Council Member Darlene Mealy. He can be frequently found in and around Flatbush with his huge truck blasting reggae music. And if you didn't listen clearly, you think it's popular regular music. If you listen closely, you hear Jesus evoked many times in his gospel reggae as it blasts down his truck. Whenever there's a situation in Flatbush, a shooting, a police issue, uh, Pastor Terry Lee is front and center. Many years ago, he began his unity walk in an effort to continue police community relations. He is ubiquitous in the Flatbush community. Everybody knows his voice, his prayer, and his truck. Uh, he is a godsend in that community, and I thank him very much. Thank you, Council Member, and thank you, Pastor. Adoption of minutes, Council Member Deutsch. Motion that the minutes of the stated meeting on July 20th, 2017 be adopted as printed. <coughs> Messages and papers from the Mayor. M542, recall of introduction 1648A. Consumer Affairs. M543, with withdrawing Mario Gooden for appointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Received order, printed and filed. M544, withdrawing Ann Holford-Smith for appointment to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. Received order, printed and filed. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. None. Petitions and communications. None. Land use call-ups. M545 and 546, City Planning Commission applications. Coupled on call-up vote, and I ask for a roll call on land use call-ups. Quiet in the chambers for a roll call vote on land use call-ups. Barron. Aye. Borelli. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinides. Aye. Cornegy. Aye. Crowley. Deutsch. Aye. Drum. Aye. Espinal. Aye. Eugene. Ferreras Copeland. Aye. Garadnik. Gentili. Aye. Gibson. Greenfield. May I get permission to vote on all the general order items as well, due to Not the lateness it. of the hour? Council member, at this point in time, I cannot grant that uh, motion, sorry. Okay. And How I, do you vote on land use call-ups? I, uh, thank, thank you. I was bored I, I guess. <laughs> thank you. Gordenchik. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Kalos. Aye. Shh. King. I don't know. Ku. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Levine. Aye. Mizell. <coughs> Menchaca. Mendez. Aye. Miller. Fermi. Palma. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Reynoso. Richards. Aye. Rodriguez. <coughs> Rose. Aye. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Traeger. Aye. Vaca. Aye. Valone. Aye. Williams. Matteo. Van Bramer. Aye. Speaker Mark Viverito. Today's land use call ups are adopted by a vote of 38 in the affirmative, zero negative. Quiet in the chambers as we now hear from the speaker, Melissa Mark Viverito. Good afternoon, when I started this. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Before we begin today's agenda, there are a few things I wanted to address as a chamber. Since our last meeting, 
Our country has been or anticipates being severely impacted by the effects of multiple outsized weather systems. In regions of Texas and Louisiana, recovery from Hurricane Harvey is still too perilous to begin. What rebuilding can be done will take years and hundreds of billions of dollars to complete, and thousands of people have been left without homes or sufficient resources in the interim. Today, parts of the Caribbean and Florida coasts brace for the landfall of Hurricane Irma. Already, the island of Barbuda has been decimated by the storm. We were very lucky uh, that Puerto Rico suffered minimal damage, and it seems like uh, Hispaniola will be um, safe as well. We know the state of New York has deployed aid personnel to affected areas of the American coast, and uh, that still, you know, our communities that have relatives in Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and other impacted regions of the Caribbean uh, are still anticipating information. So we want to reassure them that we will help to the best of our abilities in connecting them with their families. Many of us in this room are among those with family affected over the last two weeks. And while our concerns are valid, we must remember not to only pay attention when it affects us most closely. Climate change is real. It is happening. And it has become undeniable. I am proud of the work that this council has done on green issues over the years and encourage that work to continue as we look forward to a new session. I would also like to remind everyone here that all of those employed by the Council and the City of New York are able to enroll in the NYC Gives program, enabling them to automatically direct a portion of their paycheck toward qualifying nonprofit organizations. Several participating organizations are doing great work in Texas and across the coasts, and by enrolling through the NICAP Employee Self-Service Portal, you can lend a hand in those efforts as well. And on the subject of uniting in the face of adversity, I would like to give a moment to something we've covered a lot this week. In my capacity as speaker, it has once again become necessary to publicly reaffirm this council's commitment to the support and defense of the immigrant communities of New York City. Documented or undocumented, they are a major part of what makes our city great. And in spite of the racist, xenophobic, and frank, frankly nonsensical behavior of this presidential administration, and this president in particular, uh, we will not be bullied into standing down on supporting those who come to this country in search of a better life for themselves and their families. Our work on this issue has been relentless and we will continue to support the mission of DACA and stand behind the dreamers who call this city home. And before closing out, I'd like to recognize a recent death of Assembly Member and Queens Representative Michael Simonowitz, who passed away on Saturday at the age of 46. I know um, some people that served with him here and a lot of people that were deeply uh, touched by him and touched by his death. Uh, I know Council Member Barry Grudenchik was uh, particularly close to him and uh, would ask him to say a few words uh, as we pay recognition to the Assembly Member and his contributions to our city. Uh, Council Member Grudenchik. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, Madam Public Advocate. I'm going to keep this brief because those of you who knew Mike, uh, he disdained long speeches to the maximum. That may be an oxymoron, but uh, he was always sitting in the back of the room, uh, wherever we were, um, and he cared greatly about people. I first met Mike over two, two decades ago. He came into our club, and he was uh, the youngest person I'd seen there in quite a while carrying 37 signatures, uh, dem all Democratic, of course, and those of us who have carried petition, which is every one of us in this room, uh, understand what it means to find a young person who is interested in, in politics. I was lucky enough to introduce him uh, to a woman who was both of our uh, mentor, uh, Assemblywoman Nettie Mayerson, and he served for about 15 years as her chief of staff before taking her place in the New York State Assembly almost six years ago uh, to this day. Um, this Saturday, we lost a giant. He was a gentle giant. Um, he was a, one of the sweetest people I ever knew in my life. Um, I want to wish you, uh, issue condolences to his wife, Jennifer, their children, Ellie, Sheva, Yonatan, Max, and their little one, Ricky, his parents, Sheila and Sherman Simanowitz of Forest Hills, his father-in-law, Jack Bayless of Hillcrest, his mother, more blessed memory, Pearl Bayless, his brothers, Alan Barry, and his entire extended family. One of the rabbis who spoke on Sunday at Michael's funeral reminded us that all we take to the Olam Haba, which is the world to come, are our good deeds. 
I have no doubt that Michael Szymanowicz arrived in heaven with several large steamer trunks overflowing with the thousands and thousands of people he helped and the good deeds that he, he committed in their names. I want to say it was never about him. In all the years that I knew Michael, he never once asked me for a favor for himself, which in our business, to be frank, is extraordinary. Uh, I just want to end by saying that may his good deeds live on forever. May the thousands and thousands of pe people he helped in his all too short life remember his acts of kindness and maybe they be multiplied many fold. May the life he led inspire all who knew him to live lives consecrated to good deeds and helping others. May his memory be for a blessing and may his memory live on forever in our hearts. I will leave you with a few words from Shakespeare, from Hamlet. He was a man, take him for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate, Madam Speaker, for this Thank time. you, Barry, for those words. So I'd ask everyone to uh, join me in a moment of silence for Assembly Members. All rise. Thank you, my colleagues. Please be seated. <clears throat> Moving on to the agenda for today, the council will begin by voting on three appointments to city boards and commissions. First, the reappointment of John Flateau as Commissioner of Elections for the Brooklyn Board of Elections, and Mario Gooden and Ann Holford Smith, both to the Landmarks Preservation Commission. The council will also vote on multiple land use items related to the rezoning or public siting of locations throughout Queens, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. In Councilmember Levin's district, the Institute for Community Living in Brooklyn will receive a vote on facilitating the renovation and expansion of their existing building to allow for an increase in available supportive and affordable housing options. In my own district, we will be voting on an amendment to the Harlem East Harlem Urban Renewal Plan that will redraw site boundaries and change allowable site usage of the Department of Sanitation's District 11 garage in Manhattan. This vote would enable the relocation of the garage and lot cleaning unit and allow for the development of a proposed site including 24,282 square feet of adjacent land on which a new building will be constructed. As the District 11 sanitation garage nears the end of its useful life, Relocation from its current location adjacent to the Metropolitan Hospital, a public school, and existing residential buildings stands as an important goal for the Department of Sanitation and for my community. Having identified a temporary site in an existing manufacturing zone for the sanitation garage to relocate to will provide the Department of Sanitation with time to develop a more permanent solution. I commend the Department of Sanitation for agreeing to work with the community to identify a permanent site and build a new state-of-the-art facility for the District 11 garage within the next 10 years, while at the same time minimizing the impacts of the temporary site by ensuring that sanitation vehicles are no longer parked along our streets. As we look toward the future, um, we will also be voting on the creation of the East Shore Special Coastal Risk District in Councilmember Matteo's district and a series of land use actions to redevelop and revitalize approximately 22 blocks of the downtown Far Rockaway community in Councilmember Richard's district. The Council will also be considering a resolution today, Resolution 1636, 2017, which I sponsored and which urges Congress to reject proposed reforms to cut funding to the Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, also known as SNAP. The Trump administration's 2018 budget proposal would make $193 billion in cuts to SNAP over a 10-year period restricting eligibility requirements and limiting the total amount of benefits available to those who do qualify. Under this proposal, New York State would be charged with finding an additional $1.2 billion with which to fund the program by 2023, resulting in further cuts to SNAP in our state or an increase in taxes as the cost burden is shifted to citizens. With 1.7 million food insecure New Yorkers making use of SNAP each year, not to mention the millions more around the country, both children and adults, who rely on the program to meet their nutritional needs, it cannot be emphasized enough how important maintaining current funding levels is to the health and well-being of our country. So I look forward to voting on this resolution today. I also encourage all of us to reach out to Congress and speak out against the proposed funding cuts to this vital program. Uh, staff, I want to thank Tanya Cyrus, Andrea Vasquez, Terza Nasser, and Aisha Schomburg.
Next, the council will be voting on intro 401A, sponsored by council member Carlos Menchaca, which will require the Department of Transportation and the Department of Parks and Recreation to issue a report on or before June 30, 2018, regarding the potential installation of bike share near certain parks. I want to thank Faiza Malik, Jonathan Maserano, Emily Rooney, Gafar Zaloff, Terza Nasser, and Aisha Schomburg for working on this bill. Also, we said goodbye this, this, this summer this past weekend, but soon that won't mean saying goodbye to the city's beaches, as Introduction 629A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Levine, would require the Department of Parks and Recreation to extend the length of the beach and pool season to one week past Labor Day to accommodate for warmer temperatures in September. I want to thank Chris Sartori, Patrick Mulvihill, Chima Overchair, Kenneth Grace, and Jen Wilcox for the work on that bill. And next, the council will vote on a package of two bills dealing with reporting on certain city-provided programs and services for the disabled. Introduction 1236A, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli, would require the Department of Health and Mental Hygiene to submit a report to the mayor and speaker on the number of individuals receiving services for autism spectrum disorders from the Department of Health or from programs administered by the Department of Health. And intro 1424A, sponsored by Councilmember Andy Cohen, will require the Department of Education to include in their special education report the total number of students within each individualized education program disability classification. The report would be disaggregated by district, eligibility for free and reduced price lunch program, race, ethnicity, gender, English language learner status, recommended language of instruction, and grade level. This additional information would enable the council to notice trends in IEP classifications in different communities and if necessary, address inequities in service and or diagnosis. I want to thank Nicole Levine, Sylvester Yavana, Michael Benjamin, Kirlian Francisco, Jeanette Merrill, Teresa Nasser, and Isha Schomburg for their work on those two bills. Additionally, tenants uh, in private one and two family dwellings are not covered by the city's existing ha harassment law. This means that tenants in these buildings have little to no protection against harassment. Intro 1550A, sponsored by Council Member Helen Rosenthal, would expand the city's harassment law to protect tenants of one and two family private dwellings. I want to thank Megan Chen, Guillermo Patino, Jose Conde, and Sarah Gastelum for their work on that bill. And finally, the council will vote on a package of legislation aimed at enhancing and streamlining the resources, social services, and support that the city strives to offer our immigrant communities each day. As first announced in my February State of the City Address, Intro 1566A, sp sponsored by myself, Councilmember Drum, Councilmember Rodriguez, would expand the role and mission of the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs and position it to more effectively lead the city's efforts to promote the welfare of immigrants, regardless of their status. Among the many specifications laid out, Moya would be charged with working with the Civil Justice Coordinator to assess the legal services needs of immigrants establishing a state and federal affairs unit to follow changing federal laws and policies, consulting with city agencies on the implementation of laws and policies designed to protect immigrants, consulting with agencies on best practices for serving victims of crime and human trafficking, and reporting annually to the council on its activities and the unique needs of the immigrant community in our city. Also, intro 1578 is also being considered, sponsored by myself and Immigration Committee Chair Carlos Menchaca, would create an, a MOYA-led interagency task force to bring together the heads of city agencies and mayoral offices to assess the needs of New York City's immigrant communities and to provide agencies with recommendations and best practices. Additionally, agencies will look for ways to coordinate city services for immigrants, especially particularly vulnerable immigrants such as victims of crime and human trafficking, individuals who are LGBTQI, individuals with criminal justice system involvement, and minors. It goes without saying that immigrant rights are facing relentless attacks under the current political climate. With over three million immigrants calling New York City home, standing up for our residents, representing our communities, serving those who elected us, and showing up and speaking out in defense of those who chose to make their lives in our great city all mean the same thing, letting immigrant New Yorkers know you are welcome here. So I'm proud to lead a council that has done more for the protection of immigrants than any other municipal legislative body in the nation, uh, and I look forward to a vote on these issues and obviously everything else that's on the agenda today. So with that, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. That ends communication from the speaker. <clears throat> thank you. Discussion of general orders. Seeing none. Report of special committees? None. Reports of standing committees? Report of the Committee on Housing and Building. 
Intro 1550A, Harassment in Private Dwellings. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Immigration, Intro 1566A, Office of Immigrant Affairs. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1578A, Immigrant Affairs Task Force. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 730 and Reso 1641 through LU 732 and Reso 1643, Zoning Amendments. Coupled on general orders. LU 733 through LU 736 on page four, various applications. Approved, mod approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Rule 11.70B of the Rules of the Council and Section 197D of the New York City Charter. L excuse me, LU 743 and Reso 1657. Still on page four. Uh, yes, approved with modifications and coupled on general orders. L.U. 744 and Reso 1644 and L.U. 745 and Reso 1645, Special Coastal Risk District. Coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Mental Health, Developmental Disability, Alcoholism, Substance Abuse and Disability Services, Intro 1236A, Autism Disorder Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Intro 1424A, Disability Classification Reporting. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Parks and Recreation, Intro 629A, Length of Season for City Beaches. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Transportation, intro 401A, bike share near parks. I'm sorry, 629A? It's like that, intro 401A. Forward, okay, amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, uh, LU 716 and Reso 1646 through LU 720 and Reso 1649 on page six, zoning resolution. Coupled amendments. on general orders. LU 721 and Reso 1650 through LU 726 and Reso 1655, Far Rockaway Urban Renewal. Coupled on general orders. LU 727 and Reso 1656, Property Acquisition. Coupled on general orders. Resolution appointing various persons, Commissioner of Deeds. Uh, coupled on general orders. Just going back to page four on uh, LU 743, because there is a change on our agenda. I guess it's just approved modifications and coupled on general orders. Okay, I don't know that, okay. Uh, so now I ask for a roll call uh, vote on all general order items. Can we begin the roll call with by calling Council Member Greenfield? Council Member Greenfield. You're very kind. Thank you. I wish all my colleagues a happy and healthy Jewish New Year, and I vote aye. Thank you. Barron. Pass. Borelli. I and all accept. 1539, 1540, 1550, 1566, and 1578. Cabrera. Aye or no? Chin. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Today we're going to vote on the second of two special permit application at 462 Broadway, LU 716, and Reso 1646. The first for large-scale retail was denied earlier this month. However, the applicant has agreed to critical quality of life restriction that address many of the concerns that I and member of this community having regarding large and ongoing retail operation in a mixed-use community. This agreement approved retail use below the second floor, but only for stores with less than 10,000 square feet of selling sp space, including the seller. Most importantly, it creates a desperately needed new paradigm in this iconic neighborhood. We are sending a strong message that oversized retail has no place in Soho. Thanks to the dedication of Community Board 2, residents of Soho, and the staff of the Land Use Division, Raju Man, Julie Lubin, Dylan Casey, and Liz Lee for the hard work on this project, and also uh, thank you to my land use uh, Director Roxanne Early, I vote aye or no. Cohen. Uh, I am abstaining on LU 718 and 719, and I am voting aye on all other items on the general orders calendar. Thank you. Constantin Yees. I vote aye. Cornegie. Aye on all. Crowley. Deutsch. Uh, abstain on 1550A, uh, 1566A, and 1578A, and I and the rest. Drum. I and all. Espinal. 
Eugene. I want to request uh, permission to vote in all land use call-ups yes. in all items in today's agenda. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I vote aye. Mm -hmm. Forever Copeland. I vote aye. Thank you. Garadnik. Aye. Thank you. Gentili. Aye on all. Thank you. Gibson. I vote aye on all. Gordenchik. Aye on all. Thank you. Johnson. Aye. Thank you. Kalos. Aye on all. King. Permission to call, vote on all land use call ups, general orders, on the calendar? Yes. I vote aye. Thank you. We're still in chambers. Please quiet in the chambers, please. Ku. Aye on all. Lanceman. Lander. At a moment when we are called to stand up for immigrants against these just truly cruel and un-American attacks, I just want to express my gratitude to the speaker and to Chairman Chaka for leading this body in that effort, as always. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Levin. Aye on all. Levine. Aye on all. Maisel. Mealy. Menchaca. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. When this president or anyone stands up and speaks hate and xenophobia and racism against our communities, what does this council do? We stand up and we fight back. And we fight back with legislation, with resolutions, with budget, and the power of love that New Yorkers feel in every fiber of their person. And today we affirm that commitment to protect our immigrant families. Excuse me, council member. Quiet in the chambers, please. We are still in session. We apologize. Thank you. That aff affirmation and commitment to our immigrant families is addressed by the package you are seeing here today. 1578 allows us to do what I have done so much in my time as the chair of the Immigration Committee, to bring agencies together so that they all from education to parks to the economy to health, that all agencies work with the Mayor's Office of Immigrant Affairs so that they can create synergy to improve the lives of all our immigrants. In a time of fear, they are going back into the shadows. And it is time now that, in a moment of historic increases in funding for legal representation, for education, and for health care, that they have access to every single dollar, because it is true that while we serve every single New Yorker, every single New Yorker must get access to the things that we support. Intro 401A also does that to bring parks and the Department of Transportation and motivate to think about city bike in a way that creates synergy so that when we expand to every corner of this city, everyone can use city bike. And the analysis that comes back allows us to really expand it in a way that thinks about our parks as a place to recreate, exercise, and commute. I want to thank the speaker and this council for continuing to stand up and fight back against all the hate that is coming down from Washington. This city is a sanctuary city, and I'm proud to be serving in it. Thank you. Thank you. Mendez. I vote aye. Miller. I know, except for 1550. Crowley. I vote aye. Thank you. Palma. Aye. Perkins. Aye on all. Reynoso. Congratulations to Councilmember Carlos Menchaca. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Richards. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Public Advocate. Uh, today I'm proud to stand here as we usher in a new era for the Rockaway community. But more importantly, I'm most proud that this plan will benefit both the existing community and newcomers to the Rockaway Peninsula. The infusion of $288 million of investment we have secured from the de Blasio administration will ensure that we strengthen our infrastructure, create quality jobs, improve our streetscape, and provide both new open space and community facility uses for our community. After two years of robust community planning and releasing the roadmap to action, 
with the Far Rockaway Working Group, I can truly say we not only heard the community, but are implementing tools through this rezoning that will ensure the amenities our community has requested for the past 40 years will finally come to fruition. With the support of this plan, the Far Rockaway community has overwhelmingly stated that it is time for change. And while I know there are a lot of concerns around gentrification in this city, this plan aims to show that we can achieve economic growth without displacing community residents. The city is making a significant investment to provide housing that is affordable to Rockaway residents. This plan, this, the, this planning process has ensured that 100% of new housing built on public land will be affordable, and the city intends to create 1,700 new units in the urban renewal area, better known as Thriftway Mall, that will be 100% affordable for families uh, earning 30% of AMI or below. We've also secured some other uh, significant investments, $77 million for streetscape and infrastructure improvements, nearly $78 million for parks, uh, and some, uh, also some additional money to upgrade existing parks included Bayswater Park and Redfern Playground. We also have a commitment by the city to reserve a portion of the URA for the SCA to provide a new school and add an additional $10 million in new funding that will be used to invest in existing schools. And also a pilot to expand the ferry shuttle service to downtown Far Rockaway. That being said, my time is up. It is a new day in Far Rockaway. I, I want to just say thank you to uh, a few individuals who really helped this plan move forward. Uh, first off, I want to thank the mayor. Council member, can you bring your mayor comments to a close? Uh, all the land use staff, uh, Raju Mann, Amy, John, Dylan, and my staff, Mercedes Buchanan, Devin e. Brown, Jordan Gibbons, uh, David Greenfield, and all of the commissioners uh, who are part of this, including thank Deputy you. Mayor Alicia Glenn, EDC President, thank you, Council member. James Patchett, HPD Commissioner thank Maria Torres-Springer, and City I'm Planning Chairwoman. Now thank I'm you. over, I'm over. But I had to say thank you to these people. At right? all. So thank you. <laughs> I will send a tweet. Thank you, Madam <laughs> Public Advocate. <laughs> Continuing roll call. Rodriguez. <laughs> Permission to display my vote? Yes, who do you want to thank? Uh, <laughs> thank the public advocate. <laughs> uh, thank you, Speaker, and also would like to thank uh, the immigrant, Immigration Chair, Carlos Menchaca, my colleague, our sponsor, Intro 1566, the great Chairman of Education, Danny Drum. This week, we raised our voice from New York City to Chicago to Boston to Los Angeles and cities throughout the nation in a collective rejection. Uh, uh, to move the, the move of, of the move of president to end DACA. And today we legislate, we legislate in response as well. Throughout Intro 1566, we reaffirm that New York City has always been and always will be a home of immigrants. We will expand the role of the Office of Immigration, Immigrant Affairs so all immigrants are protected not only from ICE but also to get all the services that they deserve and they need. I want to acknowledge Amanda Morales Guerra, Guatemala, mother of three, now facing the protection who is standing strong in a sanctuary church in my district. I want to acknowledge Ever Garcia Vasquez, a member of the Teen State Union for over 25 years, who we just learned today was deported yesterday, despite having a family here where he has contributed so much. I want to acknowledge the many immig immigrants documented and undocumented serving the United States Armed Force who are literally putting their lives on the line to defend a country that often reject the place in it. I also want to acknowledge Alfonso Guillén, a dreamer who gave his life in Texas last week while saving the lives of all they're doing after Hurricane Harvey. We wasn't asked to do, we didn't ask him to do this. He was a first responder. And we need to ask to thank many individuals who also, even though they are a undocumented they contribute. I was arrested on Tuesday because I believe so strongly that this city and this country uh, are for everyone. It is why I emigrate here as a young 18 years old to wash dishes, but with opportunity and support I graduated from college and it is why I saw our public services. Now together with the speaker, council member Menchaca and all my colleagues, I fight for all immigrants. Those who are the new ones like myself that even with my accents contribute so much to the city are the second, third, or any generation who make this city so great. Thank you. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Continuing with roll call. Baron. Permission to explain my vote? Yes. Thank you. 
Uh, I want to call my colleagues' attention to land use 718 and 719. My time is up, Yvette? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know we're cutting back. <laughs> so this is about Ebenezer Plaza, and Ebenezer not of the literary work, but of the Bible, where there was an erection of a monument to give acknowledgment for victory over the enemies. So this site, Ebenezer Plaza, was owned by a black church in the community, and they partnered with a developer so that they would have mixed-use commercial on the bottom, residential on the top. It'll be 531 units and, no, 351 units that'll be there. And the church will have condominium space in that development. There were a lot of hurdles that we had to overcome, but I want to thank Torcida and Brisa for working with us. Those are the developers. And we now have a reduction in the overall height. We have a reduction in the number of studios. And the studio apartments will be 450 square feet each of them on an average, uh, 450 on a square average, uh, there'll be a reduction in the height. There will be equal profit sharing amongst the developers. It had been an issue, and the black developer was getting significantly less than the others, and they've worked that out, and they're having equal shares amongst the developers, and the black contractor will be responsible for hiring she will be responsible for helping them achieve their goal of 50% MWBEs for this project. And she will be the GC for the development of the church. So it's significant. And then, of course, to get to the um, rents, this project will have 20% set aside for the formerly homeless. We keep talking about homeless, but if we don't provide units for them, where are they going to go? So they'd be 20% set aside for the homeless in this project. And the other income bands are at 37%, 37, 27, 47, and 57%. So a formerly homeless person can get a studio apartment for $215 or a three-bedroom apartment for $512. And this is what we've got to do if we want to make sure that we reduce the uh, homeless crisis crisis in our city. And uh, for those at the upper band, a studio will cost $761, and a three-bedroom will cost $1,339. So I'm really you. proud of this project. Uh, Salamanca and I are in a race, and uh, we encourage all of you to come along and join us so that we can really have housing in the districts where people can afford it and not be displaced. And I want to thank Land Use, and I want to thank HPD for working me. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rose. Aye. Salamanca. Aye on all. Thank you. Torres. Aye on all. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Aye on all. Thank you. Vaca. Aye on all except 1550A. I vote no. Valone. Aye on all. Thank you. Williams. With the exception of uh, LU 732 and Company Rezzo, aye on all. Sorry, I abstain on LU 732 and 1643 resolution. Matteo. Maybe ex <laughs> excuse to explain my vote? Yes. Quiet um, chambers. Um, today we are passing the East Shore Coastal Risk District uh, District in my district, and um, the new building restrictions are necessary in order to address the unique circumstances in these coastal communities, which face an extremely high risk of flooding that cannot be simply be mitigated with infrastructure improvements. Under these zoning changes, new construction or substantial renovations on properties in the East Shore District will require a public review process except homes rebuilding after Sandy. These measures will reduce any detrimental effects of new development, safeguard environmentally sensitive wetlands, and help protect the residents remaining in those coastal communities from further risk of harm. At the same time, the zoning will encourage resilient development and accommodate existing business which may not uh, meet parking standards. As we saw during Hurricane Sandy, buildings built to modern flood standards sustained far less damage than those that were built prior to when those standards were incorporated into the building code. Thus, encouraging investment to make buildings more resilient is the best strategy to, to improve resiliency. 
Sandy not only radically changed the geography of New York City's coastal communities, it shook our sense of security and changed the way we think about living and building near the water. It should have. We must plan better, build smarter, and do all we can to protect our communities from the next storm. While there is no perfect solution to meet these challenges, especially in the complex development landscape of New York City, I believe the zoning resolution we are passing today strikes the right balance between appropriate governmental oversight, prudent flood risk management, and individual property rights. Uh, I just want to thank the speaker. I want to thank Chair Richards and Greenfield um, and make an important note that um, this process was open to the public and to the, um, the advisory boards and um, it, it was something that the community all came together and had input uh, to reach this. Uh, we made the East Shore of my district uh, a little bit more resilient today and um, that's always a good thing, especially during this uh, very difficult hurricane season. So with that, I'm voting. Uh, I and all except for 1550A, 1566, and 1578. Van Bramer. Speaker, Mark Viverito. I and all. I haven't voted. Rafael Espinel. Oh, what happened? From, from Brooklyn? Uh, oh. Starts with Council e. Member Espinel. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I vote aye on all. <laughs> thank you. All items on today's general order calendar were adopted by a vote of 46 in the affirmative, zero negative and zero abstentions, with the exception of intro 1550A, which was adopted by a vote of 41 in the affirmative, four negative and one abstention, and intro 1566A, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, three negative and one abstention, and intro 1578A, which was adopted by a vote of 42 in the affirmative, three negative and one abstention, and LU 718 and Reso 1647, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative and one abstention, and LU 719 and Res 1648, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative and one abstention, and Land Use 732 and Reso 1643, which was adopted by a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero negative and one abstention, and the revised land use call-ups Vote is uh, 46 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills have been referred to committees as indicated on the agenda. Any discussion of the following resolution? A resolution, pre-considered resolution 1636. A resolution urging Congress to reject proposed reforms to cut funding to SNAP and to reject efforts to convert the program into a block grant. Seeing no discussion on the resolution, all of those in favor say aye. aye. All of those opposed? Any abstentions? The ayes have it. General discussion beginning with Council Member Vanessa Gibson, who is not in the chamber. Um, next, we'll, we will move on to Council Member Inez Barron. Uh, thank you, Madam Public Advocate. I just wanted to extend what I had said about the Ebenezer Plaza project and to say that there's also a community benefits agreement which will give $10,000 annually to the garden because there is a slight shadow that's cast on the garden that faces this development. So the developer has agreed to give the Green Valley Gardens $10,000 annually and as a part of the community benefits agreement, the developer will give the community $15,000 annually for scholarships. And there is community preference, 50% for Community District 16, and 25% for Community District 5, because that development borders on both of those. I do want to call your attention to intro, uh, I think it's 1697, which talks about, no, 16, yes, 1697, and it calls for a stop sign or traffic light to be placed at the intersection of every school 
doesn't matter if it's a private school, public school, religious school, every intersection of a school should have a stop sign or a traffic light. And that's what this bill calls for. When I was in Albany many years ago, I fought to have it there. And they said, no, you got to do home rule. Well, here I am in the city council, and I'm presenting this bill. I hope that all of you will support it. And lastly, I do want to say that yesterday, Starrett City, which is located in my district, said that they are considering the sale of the property. Starrett City is the largest federally funded housing development in the nation. And in 2009, I'm very proud to say that I authored the bill that kept them in mitchell -Lama for the next 30 years. So they're obligated to stay in mitchell -Lama till 2039. But, you know, that's only a stone's throw away. And we're very skeptical of the sale, even though we know they're obligated to remain in it. And the assembly member, Charles Barron, and I are keeping our eyes open on this. And we're very concerned. And we're going to fight to get permanent affordability at Starrett City. Thank, Thank you very you. much. We join you in those concerns. Lastly, Council Member um, Williams. Uh, thank you. I also want to add my uh, prayers to those affected by Harvey and Irma, and my prayers for those who will be affected uh, in Florida. Uh, this past West Indian Day Parade, I want to thank uh, the Mayor of the NYPD, Council Member Cumbo, and Borough President Adams, uh, crisis management and cure violence groups and all those who worked to make it a great celebration. I look forward to continuing that work to find the happy medium that we need to make sure folks can celebrate the culture uh, and be safe. Uh, when it comes to DACA, history teaches us that deportations and threats of them have been used as a measure to dehumanize, ostracize, and as a prelude, prelude to legitimize horrors that follow. I just want to lend my voice to the work that this council, the speaker, and Carlos Menchaca have been doing, encourage my Caribbean friends and families to be, please join in the immigration debate. We've waited uh, far too long. Our Latino brothers and sisters have been doing a wonderful job. And also put it into some context. The fact is we are not going to deport millions of people, much less 800,000. We may deport a few, but this country has got its powers and uh, money and strength from abusing people and providing a workforce uh, very cheap. And whether it was the Native Americans, whether it was slaves, whether it was the Chinese who we promised they could stay in this country after they built the railroads, uh, we have a workforce that we ostracize and can then abuse. And I believe the same thing is going on here. Uh, we are creating a workforce that we can ostracize and abuse and misuse you know, and help make this economy great but we will give them a second-class status that allows them uh, to be manipulated, manipulated. And I believe that's what's going on. We should continue to fight. Uh, I thank my colleagues uh, who decided that we were going to resist on day one, Councilman Machaca, State Senator Marisol Alcantara, and others. While people said we have to wait, we said no. He said what he's going to do, and we should not wait. We knew it was happening. We resisted on day one. Hopefully, we'll continue. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, let us close now with the speaker, Melissa Macavarita. Thank you, Madam Public Advocate. Again, thank you to all my colleagues. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Good luck on Tuesday.